Good morning, participants. Let me introduce Dr. Surendra Singh Kachwa, sir. He has completed his BE degree in Mechanical Engineering from MBM Engineering College, Jodhpur. He did his MTech in Heat Power from Indian Institute of Technology, BHU, Varansi, and PhD in Evaporative Cooling from IIT Delhi. Dr. Kachwa has taught various thermal engineering courses at undergraduate and postgraduate level and guided 30 MTech dissertation and five PhDs. He served as faculty in Rajasthan Technological University at Kota and Delhi, and <coughs> Delhi Technological University at Delhi in the past. Presently, he is working as a chairperson of Suzlon in Mechanical Engineering Department, School of Technology, PDPU, Gandhinagar. He has developed the Center of Bioenergy and Biofuel Studies at PDPU in collaboration with GEDA. He has completed research projects and consultancy worth work of worth rupees 4 crores. He has a teaching experience of more than 30 years in thermal engineering at undergraduate and postgraduate level. Dr. Kachwa has been co-author in 80 technical publications in reputed national and international journals and more than 90 publications in national and international conferences. His research interests include renewable energy, assisted cooling system, ice slurry, wind and wave and uh, wind and wave wind energy resource assessment, biodiesel production techniques and hybrid energy policy. We are very much thankful to you, sir, for sparing your valuable time. You can please share your presentation, sir. Sir, over to you. So can you hear me? Your audio is muted, sir. Participants are required to keep their mics muted. Kachwa, sir, can you listen to me? Good morning, sir. Can you hear my voice?
हाँ जी हाँ जी सर हाँ जी मैंने इंट्रोडक्शन आपका दे दिया सर शायद आपका अनम्यूट था इसलिए आपको सुनाई नहीं दिया यस सर यस सर योर विजिबल वी आर सीइंग द फर्स्ट स्लाइड रीसेंट एडवांसेस इन कैस्केट रेफ्रिजरेशन सिस्टम स्टार्ट नो सर यस सर प्लीज सर थैंक यू वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल द फैकल्टी मेंबर्स लिस्नर्स एंड आई एम थैंकफुल टू द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ एल कॉलेज प्रोफेसर भट्ट and his team and uh, i would like to congratulate him that uh, they have conducted this important need of the hour uh, atal uh, fdp that is energy conservation and renewable energy for sustainable development and in that case i am again thankful to give me an opportunity to talk on a topic recent advances in cascade refrigeration system in fact i am working in that area from last uh, one decade and uh, almost can say a uh, couple of phd's uh, my students has finished in this particular area so whatever the work we have done in last couple of years i will just like to summarize that one and why this uh, topic is so important from our country point of view i would like to explain that one uh, in fact uh, dr bhavesh patel he is also a faculty member in adani group and uh, another my student vavo jain he has contributed a lot in this particular area in my talk i will start at the beginning the importance of industrial cooling then i will talk about industrial cascade refrigeration system its uh, classification and applications and then i will just see that how the three cycles can be incorporated so that the drawbacks can be minimized and at the same time that advantage can be maximized uh, then the point is that normally as a faculty members we just finish it at uh, thermodynamics only thermodynamics and heat transfer but economic is an important part from industry point of view final decision is based upon the economics and therefore i'll just talk that how the principles of thermo economics can be applied and up to a certain extent optimization technique can also be integrated besides this one now the point is that source must be renewable so we have tried with some solar and biomass combination to this ors integration system and again we have done the thermo economic analysis Besides this one, 
OARC is a developing area and therefore we have done some experimental studies. A couple of uh, can say uh, whatever we have done in the experimental studies, I'll just try to that one and then I'll finish with the scope for future research in that particular area because it is a very, very uh, growing area. Now, importance of cooling, we know that uh, uh, almost can say everybody knows that what is the importance of cooling. Ours is a hot country and industry point of view, any industry requires uh, in terms of power they will require, in terms of heating, uh, can say, uh, heating applications they will require, heating source and at the same time cooling. But European and other cold countries, for them the heating is a big problem. In our country, we are a hot country and therefore cooling is really a can say, challenging job. We know that refrigeration and air conditioning equipment, normally VCR is the cycle consuming a large amount of electrical power and in different industrial sectors like liquid milk processing, chilled ready meals, frozen food, uh, cold storage systems, electricity used for refrigeration is 25%, 50%, 60% and 85% of respective of total energy consumption, right? So a huge amount is convert, uh, can say consumed in the case of um, cooling requirement. But the main issue is that due to poor availability of electrical power, the total installed refrigeration capacity is inadequate uh, to meet the refrigeration requirement. 30%, you see that this data, 30% 30, 30 of fresh fruit and vegetables production in India is wasted due to lack of refrigeration technology. Even we see that there is a large fluctuation in vegetables in uh, summer season and sometimes when it is in, uh, say, uh, uh, in excess it is available, prices go very down. So therefore this kind of fluctuations can be avoided if we have a proper adequate storage system. Almost if you just look at the data in the Mexico, 50% of the food in Mexico is lost due to lack of refrigeration. So therefore, uh, cooling is a big challenge and if this uh, cooling phenomena with the storage system is incorporated in agriculture and other aspects, then as our Prime Minister has told, uh, almost uh, how uh, it can play a very important role to increase the uh, uh, double the income of the farmers. Now, the typical industrial cascade refrigeration system, they have wide varieties. So normally when we say that cascaded system, in that case, we can have design of cogeneration. Cogeneration means it may be application of uh, heat and power. Trigeneration, uh, trigeneration uh, cooling will be part of that one. Besides this one, nowadays the multi-generation means even some waste heat it is available. We can go for drinking waters uh, uh, from desalization of uh, from de desalization process. Now the point is that what should be the source? Normally, if it is a waste heat then normally organic Rankine cycle is considered the best one because for low temperature heat source, this cycle is now fast growing and almost can say many industries they are using this one. And this cycle with co-generation uh, co and tri-generation systems, it can be incorporated. If the waste heat is not available, in that case, the alternative is that you can use solar or biomass based ORC integrated co-generation and tri-generation systems. And uh, for other applications, cooling systems can also be used in connection with ORC based cogeneration and transition systems. And finally, almost you can say we know that vapor common system is a very good, well established, but the point is that compression, uh, compressor will consume a huge amount of electricity. Absorption systems, very good. It used the uh, waste heat or uh, I can say low temperature heat. In that case, the point is that operating cost is high, but fixed cost because due to heavy systems, almost uh, you cannot go beyond uh, below 10 kilowatt or in industry normally it is 30 kilowatt is the minimum size available. So in that case, how we can incorporate the vapor ab compression absorption system, that system is called as cascaded refrigeration system. In that case, uh, both the drawbacks of uh, vapor compression and vapor absorption system is minimized and at the same time advantage is maximized. If you just a brief idea before I go to the system, the description and other things. Normally, we can, why we go for cogeneration, generation and multi-generation, the reason is that our, we have to improve our, we have to utilize our resources in a very proper way. And in that case, the system efficiency will improve. And once the system efficiency, efficiency improves, the reduced cost of energy electricity will be there, right? And at the same time, ultimately, the net effect is that carbon emission uh, must be reduced. If it is an organic Rankine cycle based cogeneration systems, then the point is that low temperature energy sources, that is 100 to 200 source is the best for ORC. In that case, organic Rankine cycle, instead of steam, we use a refrigerant. And there are many types of refrigerants are available and people have, uh, even at commercial level, they are quite successful. 
commerce in level now and uh, you know in a couple of back it was imported but now almost as in pune and uh, various other part of the country some small uh, there are manufacturers are there they produce some small and micro scale orc systems besides this one uh, solar based uh, solar and biomass based orc integrated systems still they have a long way to come the reason is that the moment we attach solar and biomass as a source the price drastically increases and commercial viability becomes a question mark but in the near future it will be uh, expected that it will be viable so these systems you can apply it for off grid applications and decentralized power and uh, they are particularly suitable for portable cooling heating and power the point is that these three needs simultaneously how we can fulfill for industry because any industry heating will be part of that one cooling will be part of that one and power will be part of that one so from that point of view how the industry can be independent as far as this this requirement is concerned in that case the cascaded systems can play a very important role <clears throat> now the point is that if it is a cooling as i have told you that cooling is the basic requirement in that case our basic system is the vapor absorption system which is a well established technology and uh, almost uh, for air conditioning purpose uh, lithium bromide systems are very commonly used then for low temperature cooling we are having vapor compression efficient system which is also well established but the power consumption operating cost is continuously increasing in this case ejector cooling system is also uh, can say it, uh, which improves the efficiency of vapor compression system and then if you combine these two systems then we have vapor compression absorption cascade efficient system in which by combining we can even we can go for low temperature cooling applications in that case there is saving of high grade that electricity you can save it we can reduce the carbon emission and the lower operating cost and high initial cost but the main issue is that high initial cost how to compensate that one that is still a challenge but of course uh, the basic advantage is that lower operating cost will be there so the meaning is that as the electricity price will go on these system will be much more i can say viable as far as the industry is concerned first system which i want to explain is that suppose there are many industries particularly glass industries and uh, uh, other process industries where waste heat is available in that case orc integrated cascaded vapor compression absorption efficient system they are the most suitable because how to utilize the waste heat that's a very important one and uh, even in government of india they just give the incentive for that one if you just incorporate these systems then some tax rebates are also there before i come to the main system for example say one option is that suppose we have uh, this vapor compression system so we can connect either this rank uh, this rankin system but it will be very costly affair simply connect it but this size almost the investment will be heavy heavy so therefore again the economic viability is not there if you connect this pv pv panel uh, to this uh, compressor uh, to run the compressor of course pv panel and other things it requires uh, it is quite cheap as far as the day time is concerned but it is uh, uh, light is available only for 6 to 8 hours and for remaining time what happens you have to go for battery storage but the moment you go for battery storage it becomes expensive because 6 hours means only it is uh, one fourth of the time remaining three four times uh, storage is required and storage means uh, you have to pay the penalty for the cost so therefore viability point of view uh, difficult but uh, can say these systems work certainly then we have the solar assisted assisted vapor absorption system where almost can say esp this uh, uh, this uh, water heaters and other things through uh, by means of solars we can use it for generators and we can people are using this system and this system is quite almost can say convincingly people are using and industry it is followed but the challenges are that this system for a small scale it is not possible and uh, there are still there is a need for a suitable non corrosive resilient absorption working pair of course low temperature is not suitable it is only suitable for 5 to 7 degree evaporative temperature and uh, systems are not available for a small capacity resilient which i already explained the minimum almost size of this system is around say 30 kilowatt or about 10 uh, 10 ton systems are used but still almost can say within that applications space air cooling very good food and pharmaceutical applications from 0 to 7 degree it can be utilized but for freezing and ice making almost you can say it cannot be used uh, because low temperature uh, with uh, the limitation as for the evaporator is concerned uh, 
industrial point of view, already Thermax and the other companies, they produce this 9 ton capacity and evaporator temperature 7 to 12 degrees centigrade is there. Flow rate almost very high, 5 to 7 meter cube uh, per hour. And applications, you see, always when a customer goes for this one, vapor absorber system, why it is very popular? Because through condenser and the absorber, uh, hot water is there, so this, it is used for dishwashing and uh, if through evaporator almost can, they can cool the air and therefore hotels for air conditioning they can use it. So that's why the multiple almost can say heat rejected is also used as a byproduct and the cooling is also in the main, in the main objective. So from that point of view, uh, this kind of system is very popular in hotels. But the size requirement is quite high. Even there are in Gurgaon and other places, there are 50 to 100 kilowatt, this kind of systems are available. Then important point is that since the source, what should be the source? So from source point of view, low temperature source available and they can be generated by solar, biomass or waste heat. In that case, this system is almost, you can say, ORC system, it is there. And from last decade, last one decade, almost very can say, prestigious institutions like MIT and they have worked and they have designed the systems, particularly with a focus on Africa, where diesel generator sets are commonly used. So they wanted to replace all the diesel generator sets by this ORC systems. The advantage in that case is that even a semi-skilled person can work and no, I can say, prop, I can say uh, uh, skill point of view, you can say, a common man can operate this system and at the same time, the CO2 emissions can be reduced. So that was the objective and MIT has worked in that area for the uh, efficient system of this uh, expander. But still there are challenges are there. There is eco-friendly, uh, there is a, uh, what should be the eco-friendly organic fluids people are working in that area and what should be the combination of power, power and heat, expense, expander selection for micro scale, it, it is still a challenging, then organic fluid selection, and ultimately if it is a waste heat, then it is cost will be almost, as operating cost will not be there. But if you use solar, biomass and geothermal, then the price drastically rises. As far as the, this TS diagram is concerned, this cycle is almost like uh, a Rankine cycle when steam is using. So, Instead of here, the instead of steam, we can use this refrigerant. Otherwise, the cycle remains the same. It is a, since it is a clockwise and direction, that's why there is power producing device, uh, cycles. So now I am coming. I have explained the three cycles. One was vapor absorption system. Another was vapor compression system, and the third was Rankine cycle systems. As I have told you, that vapor absorption system. You cannot go beyond, uh, can say, uh, uh, beyond uh, five to seven degrees centigrade. Vapor compression systems, you can achieve the target. But the point is that suppose at 35 degrees centigrade, if you just reject the heat, and if you collect the heat at minus 10, minus 20, then huge amount of compressor work is required. So cascading means now here five to seven degree, because uh, the operator temperature is there for a vapor absorption system, and the condenser will reject the heat at 10 to 15 degrees centigrade. In that case, now the total temperature difference is 10 to 15 here and here minus 10 it is there. So in that case, drastically almost around 50, more than 50 percent compressor work we have reduced. That is the main advantage in that case. And plus, and that is uh, partially replaced by a uh, heat required for the desorber, where almost can say 90 to 100 or even 85 sometimes the desorber temperature, this whole system of uh, vapor absorption system can work. Now, if you consider only this, these two systems, in that case, we require electricity, partly equation less electricity, as well as partly by heat, a low quality, low grade heat. Now the question is that, uh, how we can get these two things from a single system? In that case, ORC is the best alternative. This, uh, another system which gives the two things, one is the electricity, another is, you can say, the heat. So this In this ORC cycle, uh, now the main source of heat is that almost you can say it may be waste heat, then the then this system is quite viable. If it is solar and biomass, then the price will rise. So these three systems, when you combine like this, in that case what happens? The input is the heat and finally at the output we are getting the cooling. If excess electricity is there, we can use the excess electricity. And besides this one, the heater is there through which waste heat applications are there in the industrial. So all the three things, heat and electricity and cooling. So depending upon which should be the primary primary product, which should be the secondary or byproduct, depending upon the requirement, this system can be designed and the, this system has the flexibility. So therefore, uh, I'll just explain that uh, say one of my students has worked in that area and he has just do the, did the calculations, thermodynamic calculations, heat transfer calculations, and then your 
economics he has tried to apply. So this system almost you can say each and every system is well established within its own territory. They are very good, but the, uh, each system has its own limitations. When we club into this form, in that case, what happens? Their uh, drawbacks are minimized and their uh, properties or their virtues are maximized. That is the main advantage in that case. When we do the uh, methodical analysis, our uh, can say fundamentals remain the same. Mass balance for each components we have to do. First law analysis, we have to do the energy balance equations. And finally, nowadays almost can say first law is not considered to be sufficient because ultimately we have to pinpoint where are the losses are there and therefore where the high grade energy is converted into low grade energy in each component. From that point of view, entropy balance equations and exergy flow rate equations are important. The combined first and second law thermodynamics is an important one. And uh, as a faculty, we should know that the second law analysis is an important one, which gives us an idea that where the improvement in the technology uh, can be motivated to do for next to uh, take it for the next level. Of course, any analysis requires some assumptions, and uh, almost at every point, almost can say equilibrium condition is a steady state uh, calculations are there. So almost can say we have to assume steady state in which the properties are not changing this through time. And since it is a second law analysis, therefore the pressure and temperature of the cooling water are taken as a reference conditions because exergy definition is that it is a property of the system relative to the surrounding. So normally you can say we consider these are the reference conditions. Sometimes the different reference conditions are also used by different authors. Another important point is that nowadays we have to use the softwares. So from engineering point of view, in thermodynamics, heat transfer and elementary fluid mechanics, this engineering equation solver gives you an edge. Almost quickly, we can find out the properties and uh, computer programming point of view, it's very good. So if you introduce this software to our students, in that case, what will happen? They will be almost can say, they can directly tackle the nonlinear problems because this uh, software is based on uh, the robust newton epson method in which the main thing is that uh, you don't have to give the uh, bother about the algorithm. Just number of equations, number of unknowns. If it is matching, then click it and it will give the solutions. So earlier, what happens? People are just focusing on programming part, their uh, algorithm part, and other things. Here, within the less time, almost can say without losing focus on the problem, we can use the software and we can find out very fast. That is the main advantage of this uh, software. Uh, when you do the analysis. The most important part is that at what portion we have to design. So three systems I have explained. Now the point is that we have to be very careful that uh, in, in these three systems, which is the minimum size based upon that one, other size should be designed. So in that case, vapor absorption system is the vapor absorption system has having the lower sizes, 10 ton. Based upon this one, other two systems, vapor, vapor compression system and OR systems, we can design it. So that part is important. All these parameters, almost you can say, uh, uh, how, how much be the propylene glycol and all these quantities. Reasonably from the industrial applications, we can just assume that one. And uh, total huh? cooling capacity 30.7 kilowatt. I request the audience uh, to mute their mic. Uh, certain disturbances are coming. Now, now the point is that um, this mechanical efficiency compressors all the equipments it is there based upon the industrially available information we have considered uh, fluids and other things again the informations are available in handbooks and other things so for the vapor compression system most commonly uses r 410a again you see this is a very leading area where in every cycle the new fluids people are trying objective is that based upon the climate change they consider Beside this one, efficiency point of view, they are considered, and then some certain protocols are there. So whatever they are not suitable, time to time they have to change it. So that's why this is a very leading area in which the different combinations people are trying. Now that property chart almost can say just for comparison purpose. If it is absolutely vapor compression system, then almost can say condensed temperature is 35, and then it is jet the heat. Whereas in our case, when it is cascaded almost at 15, 14 or 15 degrees centigrade temperature, it will reject the heat to evaporator of the vapor absorption system. So that is the difference this particular diagram shows. Uh, VCRS, the working fluid we have taken R410A and 
in the case of vapor absorption system, uh, fluid is uh, this lithium bromide we can take. Even uh, I can say in some of the cases, people have tried with ammonia water combination also. VCR system almost can say uh, once the uh, temperature is 15 degrees centigrade, so that's why the pressure is also low. So it is almost 1.12 uh, uh, this kilopascal, it is that 12.23, and then 400 kilopascal uh, it has taken. And the cycle for ORC almost can say N pentene they have taken. And uh, in that case, the parameter, these are the parameters in the cycle. So this is almost similar to the Rankine cycle. This cycle, almost cycle diagram, etc. Almost because every student at the graduate level they are having the idea. And uh, only the point is that how this particular idea can be incorporated to solve the more complex problem. That is the challenge. So at undergraduate level, uh, final year projects can be a, uh, it can be a very good project or or uh, can say for MTech students, a dissertation point of view, uh, this is this this can be a very good problem because in that case they can apply the knowledge of thermodynamics, heat transfer, and economics. And in this way, industrial problems they can solve. Now, there is an interesting part is that once a heating system, cooling system, commonly they are operated, you will see that uh, as per our can say past knowledge for cooling system, we use the word uh, this COP, coefficient of performance, whereas for power generating systems, we use the efficiency. Once it is combined, then for combination part of view, which system we have to follow? Of course, normally you can say efficiency is more important. We just go for efficiency. <coughs> In that case, uh, COP for individual VCRS, how much it is there? Individual vapor absorption system, uh, COP, how much it is there? Combined COP of this cooling system, the formula we can use that one. Besides this one, we can use this uh, first law efficiency for power generation systems and rational efficiency for second law efficiency. That's very, very important. So these results give an insight that suppose if you use a vapor compression system, then 4.41 is the COP and your uh, this second law efficiency is 27 percent vapor absorption system normally you can say 0 0.7 or 0 0.75 as individual it works and second law efficiency is 23 percent orc around 7 percent why because the waste heat is there that's why it is 7 percent and in combination of uh, vcrs and vrs almost can say this is 0 0.54 why because the low grade heat we are requiring in vrs that's why the efficiency is low but since the three things are generated Overall, overall efficiency, energetic efficiency is around 80 percent. So that's the main achievement in that case. Okay, whatever energy it is used, we are utilizing in a very good way. And therefore, uh, exergy losses are reduced. So therefore, that's why around say 46.7 percent second law efficiency is there. The so second law analysis gives that each and every component where the irreversibility losses are there. And based upon that one, the designer can take a decision which component is more sensitive and which component is less sensitive. So that is the main gain uh, from this one. The results are very important. Uh, tri generation systems almost can say around less than uh, around 80 percent efficiency you can achieve. Otherwise, as an individual, almost can say efficiencies are quite low uh, as far as the individual subsystems are concerned. Now, in general, for example, say this is a generalized study we have done, which is a part of till now. This is a part of thermodynamics and heat transfer. These two things are involved in that case. Now, if you go to micro level, then for, we have tried for different fluids also, different ORC fluids we can use. Normally, there is no ideal fluid existing. Somewhere we have to compromise with some environmental point of view or from efficiency point of view. But there are many options are available out of that one. Uh, we, have, we have taken the base case as n pentene, uh, which is, uh, can say, different properties are that GWP is quite low. Whereas other cases you are rejected because GWP is quite high. So that's why they are outrightly rejected. Now, based upon this N pentene, if you compare the different irreducibilities and other things uh, for all these ORC systems, then again we have seen that irreducibility point of view almost can say N pentene is quite good. And these are the data available. And efficiency is around, say, highest efficiency it is having for ORC, 7% when you use the N pentene. But still, if you go to the literature, even better than N pentenes are now they are available. So this is a continuously, you can say, uh, open area where new uh, refrigerants people are trying. And in this case, the refrigerant we are using for power generation purpose. Structural analysis is a very important, uh, can say, this uh, uh, part of the uh, second law analysis where this, this particular, you can say, structural coefficient, we can say that uh, X is the param system parameter, process parameter, and I is the total irreducibility. The rate of change of system irreducibility with respect to a parameter divided by 
rate of change of irreducibility of the kth component with the process parameter. So this ratio gives an idea and this ratio must be as many as possible. This is shown by the slope of this curve. The slope reduces or the, in that case slope as well as the quantity reduces, then we can say that it's good one. So normally you can say n benton we have seen so almost you can say as compared to these two uh, uh, represents, this is having a better in case of evaporator. So likewise, for other systems also, we can find out the structure using the structural analysis, we can find out what is the reducibility of system with respect to the evaporator with respect to all the other components. So this gives a designer that uh, can say on which component he has to focus with the process parameters. So that's why for uh, can say we have drawn the graph for uh, this is called as spider graph in which the different components are there and for different components what should be the irreducibility so normally you can say these two components are the most sensitive one as compared to the other components and the irreducibility loss is almost as this is zero uh, uh, zero is center 20 percent 40 percent 60 percent 80. so the, based upon this one we can find out the, which component is more sensitive and which component is less sensitive so this gives an idea uh, regarding the irreducibility losses. The whole analysis is known as the coefficient of structural bond. And this is a very almost can say, traditional analysis and people use it. Uh, this one to analyze the uh, second law analysis for different components of almost uh, any thermal system. Now you see normally at undergraduate level, postgraduate level, we stress on thermodynamics and heat transfer. And thermodynamically, the which system is good and which system is relatively good, all analysis we do it. But the point is that industry point of view, normally, can, of course, now nowadays we are teaching economics, but economic part almost separately we are teaching. So it is not an integral part with respect to our heat and heat transfer and thermodynamics. So therefore, but industrial point of view, all decisions are based upon economics. Right. So ultimately, it's not the thermodynamics or heat transfer or other things. It is the economics play a very important role. Finally, how whether it is industrially viable, what should be the payback period, what should be the break on point, how much is the profit is there. So based upon final decision for the industry is based on that one. So therefore, a basic, not a, because economics is not a rocket science, but simple based on fixed cost, operating cost, and other simple uh, interest and other parameters. We can do the what should be the system cost and based upon the system cost, we can calculate the simple payback period because this gives an insight. Normally in industry, if the payback period is less than three or three and a half years or industry go for, to, for the changes. But if it is uh, more than that, say four year, five year, then industry is little bit reluctant. So from that point of view, this is a parameter. Another parameter is break even point. So these two parameters normally you can say remember that for automobiles and other things, the break even parameter comes seven or eight years. But because that uh, cut throat competition is there, so all big companies can afford it. But for small cases, what happens? Uh, a little bit for medium scale, it is difficult for them uh, to take a decision if the uh, simple payback period is more than three and a half years. So we have done this analysis because economics gives an insight to whether they are industrially viable or not. So from that point of view, we have done this. <laughs> Simple yeah. These are the different so, components of cost. We have heat texture cost and in the literature, in the open literature, all these informations are available. So for different, uh, all the cascaded systems, we have the equations, how with respect to the capacity, their cost varies, fixed cost varies. So all these correlations are available and plus capacity recovery factor, we have considered the interest rate, I as a 10% and the life of the component as 25 years. Unit cost of electricity we have considered 0 0.08 US dollars per kilowatt hour. So based upon this preliminary analysis we have done and we have just uh, can say these are the final results we have got. Uh, for cooling capacity of 30.75, if you use, we have compared the standalone means suppose we use a simple vapor compression system alone and the present system in which it is a combination of uh, ORC, vapor compression system and vapor Johansson system. So for same cooling load, uh, the compressor capacity, if you just see that, almost the present system is drastically reduced. Means direct requirement of electricity is almost because of more than 50% it is reduced. Hours of operation we have kept same. And annual compressor power uh, requirement in this case will be almost because this is high. Here it will be uh, less. Uh, it is not mentioned here. Uh, I don't know whether to do printing it will be there. Uh, unit electricity cost, uh, in both the cases it is same. and uh, 
annual electricity cost in this case it is 12,078 uh, US dollars and saving part if you just calculate it will be around say US dollars uh, 12,000 US dollars per year is there. Now the main thing my uh, most important I will not go the nitty gritty of this one but the main thing is that industry first person asked uh, the first question asked by the industry is that what is the payback period. Unfortunately, payback period is more. Why? Because the fixed cost becomes high. Now, this payback period uh, can say in the future, uh, what do you expect? The point is that as the operating cost will increase, the payback period will drastically reduce. At present, it is five years plus. So therefore, industry is a little bit reluctant and a lot of can say be only the big industries can bear this one. Otherwise, five year plus means for small and middle scale uh, uh, can say represent industries, they consider it's too high even break, uh, break one point around 4.2 years. So that is the main limitation due to which the industry is hesitant to apply those those kind of systems. Otherwise, thermodynamically or you can say operation point of view, they are quite considered to be quite good and uh, environmental point of view, they are very, very efficient systems. Uh, all, all, always because in economics, uh, these are the base points are there. So further, we can optimize the system by applying that search methods. Well, very well done, uh, say commonly used in which the, we have to optimize the cost. So that exercise also we have done. And based upon this one, a little bit improvement we have done. For example, say ORC operator heat cost, because uh, the heat duty reduced. Then process heat duty of the, uh, this uh, heater also reduced. Exergetic efficiency. A base case it was there, but optimum case it can reduce because ultimately the objective is the cost reduction, right? Heat exchange area reduced means the fixed cost is reduced. Capital cost uh, can say almost can say five percent is reduced. Annual system cost also we have tried uh, and annual cost slightly increased. And payback period certainly for 5.3 we are successfully reduced to 4.5 and break even instead of 4.2 it is 3.5. So, uh, you see, even you, you can go for, we have done only for single optimization, one can go for multi optimization also. So, these techniques, by applying these techniques, we can adjust based upon the requirement. Now, uh, industry point of view, this particular diagram gives an idea that what, by varying the different parameters, normally in the future, we are not aware interest rate will change or total life duration is how much or any other fixed cost or cost of the uh, uh, heat, cost of the electricity, it may vary. So in that case, what happens? Our equations are, we are having the equations. So this selection diagram gives a very, we can say, uh, direct insight that is what will happen in the future. So by applying the different parameters, now this, this uh, x-axis is annualized cost of equivalent VCRS, means the, uh, almost can say, uh, this VCRS system, this is the cost. Now, this is annualized cost of present system. This is a modified system, right? If if you compare these two things, if the data comes on this line, right, diagonal, then both the systems are efficient. If it is on right hand side, in that case, the point is that uh, this present system will be much more efficient because in that case, the cost will be high and the present system cost is less. So if the data lies right hand side of this line, obviously this is more viable. This system is more viable. If this data lies on this line, both the systems are viable. And if the data lies along this line, in that case, what happens? We can say that no, but that, uh, that a lot of changes is required in the equivalent, uh, can say, uh, this equivalent system is, uh, the equivalent VCR system is good as compared to the modified system. This gives a selection diagram, gives a clear cut insight. So he says, in our case, the data is on this side. So therefore, uh, I can say uh, almost we, we can go for the, this annualized cost of present system. It is much better as compared to the equivalent VCR system. In a similar way, uh, this annualized cost of present system, if you compare and uh, can by other parameters, K and I and other very, still it is on right hand side. So even by slight variation of these things, uh, this existing system is quite good. So main limitation almost can say what we have considered. We have considered waste heat powered ORC systems and uh, in this system, the point is that waste heat we have considered almost can say there are many industries where waste heat prices uh, almost can say negligible. So in that case, almost can say we have achieved exergetic efficiency 79%, energetic 79%, exergetic 47%, and simple payback period through optimization we have got. I'm a meeting over good. Yeah, the 47 break even point 4.2 percent and through this optimization we can go for 3.5 percent. 
तो द पॉइंट इज दैट ऑलमोस्ट कैसे दैट इज ऑलवेज स्कोप दैट थर्मोडायनेमिक एंड हीट ट्रांसफर प्रोसेस पैरामीटर्स एंड इकोनॉमिक पैरामीटर्स थ्रू ऑप्टिमाइजेशन टेक्निक्स वी कैन कन्वर्ट इनटू फेवर कैसे द पोस्ट सिस्टम वी कैन गो इनटू फर्दर फेवर्स एंड ऑलमोस्ट दीस सिस्टम्स इन द फ्यूचर गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज कैन प्ले इंपॉर्टेंट रोल besides this one the cost of electricity operation cost can play important role so all these op operating cost are increasing and if some interest rate and other things and they can also play a important role so depending upon that one the future these systems can be much more viable and industry can be attracted towards this one now since uh, we have considered the waste heat only right where the price is not there but this there are many industries that waste heat is intermittent in nature Once, once this is intermittent in nature, in that case, their application is considered uh, it is erratic. So, therefore, what should be the alternative? In that case, we have to go for the source as solar and biomass powered, solar thermal and bio bi uh, biomass powered ORC integrated cascaded diffusion system. We have to go. Of course, the moment we have additional system as a heat source for solar and biomass, in that case, the cost will further rise. But since it is renewable energy so that's why uh, can say for off grid systems still it is a attractive solution so that's why our original system was this one where earlier we have used the waste heat now we have this uh, this uh, concentrated solar collector field and we have the biomass system so this solar field almost 5 to 6 hours you can use this one and for remaining cases we can use the biomass and other things So since uh, can say we are uh, can say supplying this heat by two systems, the cost will drastically improve. So that is the main drawback in that case, because uh, only for five hours, five to six hours you can use solar and biomass. Of course, uh, if you use 24 hours, in that case biomass uh, availability is not there. So partly you have to use biomass, partly you have to use this uh, solar. So in that case, this is the source you are supplying, and then the cycle which I have already explained. This can work like this. But this portion, addition of this portion, of course, uh, can say climate part of it's uh, climate change part of it's good, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, thermodynamically it's good. But the point is that price point of view, this is again uh, can say discourage the things. Almost, because I'll not go the nitty gritty. I'll just uh, can say the slides will be distributed to you, and plus I'll see uh, can, all these things are published in uh, can say papers. I'll give the reference of that one. So. and the point is that all these solar calculations all these biomass calculations other things etc we have to calculate and based upon this one we have to see that how much is the uh, fixed cost of resources and then what is the operating cost and equipment cost other things we have again done the analysis of this one the simple payback period we have calculated break even point for this new system we have calculated and in that case the question is that uh, all these parameters we have calculated ptc other things uh, this uh, uh, reactors collector LF, lfr collectors if you use this one then we have compared also this uh, ptc and lfr so based upon this one we have done the analysis because all these analysis is open literature data are available and biomass different type of biomass if you use what will be the impact and other things cost of unit electricity other things so all these things we have calculated based upon this input data and we have done the thermo economic analysis for different cases we have calculated this For the, because the solar energy for different locations are different, right? The Ahmedabad, Jodhpur, and Dekhat at the US we have taken, and biomass at different prices are there. So biomass at different different locations, different prices. Solar energy inputs different locations, different inputs. So everywhere, every unique place has a different solutions. So whatever the solution comes, it is not a universal. So at a particular location, can uh, say we should know that. at particular location what is the solar solution available what is the biomass solution available and sometimes to generate the electricity what is the uh, can say this uh, wind uh, wind energy solution available so each and every location all these things we should know it so that the input can be designed according to the best economic requirement all already can say thermo uh, this thermo economic analysis we have done it solar fraction at different places how much it is available biomass consumption depending upon the requirement of uh, the system how much it is requirement and thermodynamically preferred we have concluded that parabolic this is good uh, as compared to lfr but thermo economic point of view lfr is good and n pentene uh, this um, uh, fluid is uh, better uh, performance straw type of uh, this uh, 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 this biomass is good as compared to other kinds of biomass and uh, then uh, ptc the main issue is that it is imported because there are the monopoly of couple of countries that's why the cost is high 
if this is converted indigenously or we can use the indigenous LFR and parabolic disk, in that case, cost can account, uh, the, that is expected that cost can be reduced. So the main issue, that technology point of view, that solar thermal well, well established, but the price is uh, still an issue. Therefore, uh, by using the indigenous matter and material and encourage the companies to produce those, uh, to supply those equipments at lesser price, in that case, the cost will be much more attractive. Again, we have drawn the selection diagram and selection diagram we have seen that since the price is higher in that case as compared to earlier diagrams, these points are quite nearer to this one. So once we use solar and biomass, almost we can say that both the systems are, uh, can say, uh, economically viable. Uh, the existing system, uh, the, um, the modified system cannot beat the ex uh, existing system because it is very near to that one. So advantage is not much, but still it is on this side. That's why you can say the future lies for these kind of systems. Again, here at this point, it is there. So as compared to earlier, earlier those systems were here. The price of the this uh, proposed system was good. But now the point is that almost nearly the VCRS standalone system and the proposed system, more or less the price remains the same. So therefore, in that case, the uh, policy point of view and uh, further modifications are required from material point of view so that the cost can be reduced. The selection diagram quickly gives an idea that how uh, we can for decision making it's a very very important uh, concept graphically we can interpret that what should be the results so these are the almost say, different different variations we have done and based upon that one we can uh, get an idea but still in one case you see your left side means the modification modified system is not good but still on this side still we can see the slight advantage for the proposed system it is there all these points are here advantage for the proposed system right Solar biomass powered, if you have, in that case, it is good for integrated system for upgrade applications. Simple payback period, again, you can say as compared to earlier, it is increased, so it's too high and industry cannot attract for this one. Break even point, 7.71 years. So the point is that these are the main hurdles and uh, due to which the industry is hesitant to apply those down. Thermo economically preferred solar collector field, LFR is good one, final type of the, uh, the reactors, uh, reflectors. Thermo economically promising working fluid is N pentane, but still nowadays in the open literature, you'll see that better uh, fluids are coming. Straw type biomass is considered good uh, because the calorific value is high. Location point of view, we have used the Degard, which is solar energy point of view, it's good, but it doesn't matter. If you have Ahmedabad and Jodhpur, they are considered good locations. So for those places, this kind of systems one can apply. So meaning is that selection diagram for uh, showing effect of different collector diagram, organic fluid working fluid the selection diagram is the main quick decision making as a preliminary level you can quickly take a decision whether the change parameter point of view change in slide technology etc economics uh, uh, economic uh, factors how you can take a decision from that point of view preparation of selection diagram is a very very important tool for an engineer to take a decision uh, as i have told you that vapor absorption system vapor compression system and third one is the ORC. The ORC is last one decade. People are trying very hard to develop that one. The so couple of you can say we have also studied this uh, small one kilowatt scroll compressors. We have used that one and we have converted the scroll compressor available in the market into expander just by changing its ball. That's a very uh, elementary techniques available. And then we have uh, done the experimental test trick. And based upon this one, we can have this scroll, scroll compressor of one, uh, one kilowatt, other systems, simple cycle evaporator, and then your condenser is there, and surge tank and pumping, pumping pressure is there. So based upon this one, we have developed this uh, system, and uh, we have just almost, this is the photograph of the system, and uh, these are the parameters, performance parameters, the pressure ratio of the expander, uh, isentropic efficiency, thermal efficiency, and torque, how much we have measured that, how much power is generated to form that point of view, arrangement of torque is there, and overall cycle efficiency, how we can calculate that one. So we have done this simple experiments and our undergraduate students have done that one. And based upon this one, uh, almost we can say these are at the measurable parameter, temperature and pressure and mass flow rate. Based upon this one, we have determined the calculated parameters, enthalpy for first law parameter and entropy for second law parameters. And these are the cycle diagram. These are the parameters we can establish. And based upon this one, we have tried to calculate the performance parameters. Uh, okay, uh, first these are the trends. The main thing is that heat source. Heat source you can see that from 100 to 180. As the heat source increases, then 
different pressure ratios and other things, temperatures and other things, they will increase, right? Mass flow rate also increases. So these are all experimental results. And how the, as compared to part load, uh, can say for different different conditions, how the heat duty, mass flow rate, pressure ratio, temperatures, how the variation takes place, so we can get an insight that how our system will work. So these are the almost can say work output, isentropic efficiency, how it varies, and RPM, how it varies. Uh, the net cycle uh, work decreases. So these changes through experimental results we have got it, and based upon this one, we have just I'll uh, just show that uh, we have done this economic analysis where these parameters we have taken, and net uh, annual energy generation, levelized cost of energy, and uh, discount rate. Based upon all these considerations, some economics also we have applied. But now, based upon this one, the results which we have got is that if that outside source is 85 to 180 then thermal efficiency, very low thermal efficiency we can count because losses are very high in a small scale. If you increase the capacity, this quantity can be further increased. Therefore, that's why the ORC around 1 kilowatt, less than 1 kilowatt is not suitable. It should be around 5 kilowatt or 10 kilowatt efficiency will be much more better. And uh, source uh, temperature almost can see if you apply 160 degree centigrade, the efficiency will further increase. Economic results, of course, cost point of view, this is 0 0.08 US dollars means 6 rupees per unit we are getting. A little bit cost is quite high. Um, the main reason is that uh, almost can say this expander cost is also high. And uh, since it is not indigenously uh, manufactured, if the moment it is produced by Indian industry, the price can go further downward. All these, uh, can say, since the time was less, I have just covered all these, uh, can say, the, the uh, can say the, my PhD student, he has published in General Clean Production, a very reputed one, impact factor more than six. Energy conservation management, almost can say it again, a very good journal. The detailed informations that are available into the journal, solar energy data we have just in the solar energy journal we have published, and then the different different type of this refrigerant we have done that study. It has been in International Journal of Energy and Environment. So the point is that once a good journal means we are satisfaction that at least at par with international standards or publications are there, and our students they are just can say they can compete the uh, can say uh, they can understand the industrial problem properly and they can go. Now, uh, if time permits me, uh, I'll just have some more uh, ideas. Still in those cycles, uh, there is always a scope for a better heat transfer studies. Economics from industrial point of view, it is always nowadays, even in publications or from industry point of view, whatever we do, it analyze it, they will say that what is the economic implications. So that, that's why the economics is always a part of that one. So once the economics is there and further to reduce the cost, we should be aware of the single optimization techniques and also the multi optimization techniques. Nowadays, the softwares are available, and if you know the fundamentals, we can apply directly all these three heat transfer, thermodynamics, economics, and optimization techniques. Using those things, different systems we can analyze and cost reduction, efficiency improvement, and environmental point of view suitability, all these aspects we can judge it. So, almost you can say solar biomass based ORC integrated systems, still we apply those our can say, tools and the, how to reduce the cost and improve the effectiveness that part people are still across the world people are working besides this one the micro scale or OC cycles uh, the indian industry should manufacture so that these systems can replace the existing uh, gensets uh, where diesel is used and they are creating pollutants so this cycle has a potential to replace all the generator sets in which the diesel is uh, utilizing now uh, the future scope part of you, uh, we have, I have explained this one that uh, vapor absorption system connected with the vapor compression system. Now this vapor absorption system, single effect. One can use the double effect. So people have worked in that area. So again, the bigger is the size, the better will be the performance. For big size systems, almost you can say this, if you connect it in that case, almost you can say the results of this system will be much better of that one. So almost this slide I have mentioned this one. The so results almost you can say COP point of view, uh, one can get all the COP of total system uh, almost can say uh, this cycle system is 0.91 as compared to single effect it is high the reason is that it is double effect uh, in industrial point of view you can say in foreign countries almost can say in, uh, in Italy one of the Benison the big houses they have used this cascaded systems with solar heaters almost can say storage tank is there and they have used this system and successfully it is running in uh, Italy MIT almost can say in rural areas, they have just divided the expand into the two portions to design a more efficient uh, 
three kilowatt uh, target for ORC. And in that case, the expander one and expander two, uh, multi expanders they have used. And with the well, like I said, this uh, developing world of African countries uh, with the focus, they have developed this one and they have installed a couple of uh, these ORC systems there with the focus that in remote areas where the electricity is not there, the people can get the electricity and for medical purpose almost can say uh, they can run this as a power plant. So this was uh, almost can say that photographs in uh, Lesotho, Africa, because uh, the people have used this ORC cycle. Features, as I have told you, small scale solar organic cycles, uh, remote off grid areas, they can use it. And the main advantage is that main competitive technology, the PV collectors, Solar wars you have an advantage of being manufactured locally. So almost you can the same skilled worker can work there. At the same time, the technology can be locally manufactured. That's the main advantage. A scope to avoid skilled persons, uh, the no need of skilled persons, and there are also more flexible and allow the production of electricity and hot water as a byproduct. That is the main advantage of ORC. Now, the one important point I, I, I just want to tell that. Normally, what happens the source point of view, we use the solar or wind and solar or biomass. It is intermittent in nature, right? So therefore, the point is that storage system will become an integral part of this kind of complex. Already the system is big, but to make it more efficient, we have to be a storage system. Once the storage system is there, in that case, solar system, effectiveness of the solar system can be improved by say, six hours. If depending upon the storage system, we can increase the Total heat, maybe you can say, depending upon the capacity of heat source, six hours, uh, six hours, six hours, it can work for 10 hours, 12 hours, or 18 hours, depending upon the storage system. But of course, the cost will increase. But people are working, this is the main area. That's why this storage system will be the main burning area at present. How to improve the uh, uh, renewable energy sources in terms of storage system? The source point of view, storage tanks uh, at low temperatures is not a tough job. Almost it's not rocket science. We can have height uh, at a temperature of say around 100 or 110. We can have storage of tanks we can design so that the total effectiveness of the system can be further improved even in the night time. Another another part is that most of the time people work only in uh, into the so, uh, source focus. Sometimes they have to focus on the product side also, right? The product side we are producing, say for example, chilled water. Instead of chilled water, if you go for the ice slurry, which is a very common practice in Europe, South uh, Korea, uh, Japan, and uh, uh, other developed world. The reason is that if they store this ice slurry during the daytime and use it as a represent, secondary represent in the nighttime, uh, in that case, it is very, very advantageous. The reason is that ice slurry is nothing but a mixture of ice particle, uh, very thin ice, uh, very small ice particles, depressant, and water. The, normally, when the temperature goes low, uh, the water will freeze, but ice slurry almost you can say due to depressant, you can achieve a temperature of almost the semi liquid slurry form at minus 10, minus 15, depending upon how much fraction of depressant is added. So, this kind of industrial slurries are generators are available, and in our laboratory and, and Delhi Technological University, we have produced that one. And you can see that the total size, the total size will be almost you can say if you use this ice slurry. Right. In that case, as compared to chilled water, the equipment size would be very, very small. So nowadays, the trend is that wherever the vapor exhaust system is used, where chilled water is used, so you can replace the chilled water systems by ice slurry systems. And there are many successful examples are there in uh, developed world, China and South Korea. So that is the main advantage of ice slurry. On the product side, we have to focus. And storage is quite easy. And plus, this has a huge potential because uh, ice means it can carry away a huge amount of load in terms of latent heat load. That is the main beauty of this one. Further ice slurry applications, even you can say this is very, very important from uh, can say the industry point of view. Ice slurries, you can just have this uh, fish transportation is quite easy because it can be covered directly so that the temperature of the product can be reduced. Even in medical, the ice slurry for kidney operations, etc., one can use it because a surgeon can get only 20 minutes. A surgeon of 65 years, in 20 minutes, he has to take a decision. But if the kidney is taken out and if it is cooled by ice slurry, a surgeon can take decision in 40 minutes. So that facilitates in operations and other things. Similarly, in industry, for example, say uh, pipeline cleaning and other things. So ice slurry cleaning is uh, that is called PIC. Uh, this is almost can say a uh, fast developing techniques where a pipeline can be cleaned because otherwise what will happen? Uh, this deposition takes place and this pipeline has to be cut in the case of uh, in this petroleum industry and which is very costly affair. 
the product side also a lot of improvement is there why you can see that why the isolate is required the reason is that for uh, say for example uh, it is a load of uh, this dairy process in dairy process only for one or two hours a huge load is there whereas for other cases a load is not there so how to compensate that load ice slurry can give a solution to that one so that's why almost can say for bigger plants this ice slurry is an integral part otherwise what will happen you have to uh, design a machine in such a way and it will be most of the land will be underutilized so that's why this ice slurry can give a load for uh, a very good solution for dairy processing you know similarly for cheese processing ice slurry is also applied in uh, when i was in delhi technological university 70 liters plant we have designed and uh, it was a aict project and almost as my students got this prize award in which almost as the jury was from uh, north north south and from various com uh, competitors were there the so one lakh would be prize they have uh, they have got it and uh, even once the after presentation uh, he got a job uh, in because he was offered a job by blue stars and other things but he was a faculty member and he opted for only to remain faculty now remember that all these analysis and other things the fundamental remains the same we have to be strong fundamentals of energy entropy and exergy heat transfer analysis an integral part of this one solar energy data and biomass data then we should know that one for location the combination of all these things will give you a solution for energy exergy and all these things uh, the challenge is almost can say the the challenge is still is that almost can say uh, evaluation design modeling and solar energy requirements are very important material development is still a fast challenging uh, can say impacts are there uh, because the, ultimately the fixed cost depends on the materials the materials should be efficient as well as supportive for the purpose process parameters integration of solar energy now it is quite successful uh, for cooling and power generation applications the multiple of these systems should be flexible and at the same time requirement of the industry we can get the cooling we can get the power we can get the uh, heating all these things should incorporate and plus they must be flexible that uh, for as per the requirement of the industry besides this one the most important part is that since the source is used as a uh, biomass and uh, your solar energy so therefore pcm will play an important role the both on product side we should focus on the uh, how to store is the product or source side how we can store is the hot source so both the sides almost can say a lot of work is required to be done so therefore that's why nowadays the storage systems are the main uh, can say um, uh, research problems which normally you can say product side people they have a less focus but i will say that even product side how to store the systems it's important so that's why nowadays almost can for storage system this uh, um, bio storage systems are coming then your uh, organic inorganic various categories of systems are there and different temperature ranges for each temperature range just like solar equipments we can have storage systems also which is the efficient for a different uh, for different temperature range so if you incorporate all these things with the cycles in that case the efficacy or efficiency of the cycle system will improve a much better way so that's why in that case we can develop a solar state multi generation systems in a much better way so that was almost as a brief idea and always can say in that case uh, uh, as you uh, can say dhirubhai mani the son, son of the land he has clearly told think big think fast think ahead ideas are no one's monopoly so as a faculty member calculations is our biggest asset and uh, if you have a proper advantage of softwares and the manpower of our students almost you can say <coughs> designing no one can stop us to design a much better system and depending upon that one the, we can convince the industry that this system will be much better or the time will come that these systems will play an integral part of indian industries so all these calculations etc because uh, i am thankful to my students who has worked very hard and at international level they have published almost as these calculations and i am proud of that and in future also i am expecting them uh, to contribute in that area so i just my uh, submission to faculty member is that the calculation point of view almost as we have to be efficient and those calculations we should introduce because main thing is that with cascaded systems a student commonly knows an idea regarding heating cooling and power generation all the three things how we can in a judicious way how we can produce and which is directly applicable for the industrial point of view so with this one i am just uh, finishing and again once again i am just thankful to all uh, the, uh, the organizers to giving me an opportunity and for patience hearing 
to the audience in which I guess that most of them are faculty members. And uh, now the remaining time, I'll, I'll just uh, if uh, the organizers permit, then I can interact with them uh, with some question answers. So for, that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, sir. Participant, no, participant you, can, you ask can ask questions if you have. No. I think the participant, their mic might be muted. Participant, participants can unmute their mic and uh, then only that's what they can do. Uh, if there is no questions, then can I take five, five, uh, some general comments regarding five, ten minutes? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah, yeah. So my point is that you see, uh, most important point is that even you can say that even thermodynamics, the laws remains the same, but the presentation and uh, how to interpret those laws they are fast changing in ten years. Even fundamental subjects have changed. For example, say uh, this uh, Sanjay's book of thermodynamics. A in uh, thermodynamics. So this book almost can say uh, the presentation is a different thing. So the point is that the software of engineering equation solver it is an integral part of this uh, thermodynamic book written by Sanjil. And Sanjil almost can say he is uh, considered to be not a good name in research. But the point is that in teaching he has uh, uh, won the ASME award in US and considered to be a very good teacher. So that can say how this material is presented. So we have to be very careful while teaching the students that which book we have to select. So almost at international level, uh, and the very good university they are following the same book. We should follow it rather than some local or general uh, local, uh, local author book because it is our utmost duty that students should be uh, aware of what are the best books available. So the Sanjil's book almost it's a very good engineering equation solver, integral part of that book. So therefore, simultaneously when he solve the problems. He can integrate that one. Besides this one and thermodynamics and other things, we should be very careful that the system developed at present, we should give the realistic data from industry point of view. So almost the data is fast changing, the systems are changing, but they should be aware that how the system performance parameters are there. Besides this one, uh, the new represents are coming. So still, suppose if you do a numerical problem related with R11 or R22, then it is not, we are not doing justice. We have to be aware of that. What are the recent, uh, can say, this refrigerants R134A? It will be obsolete after a couple, a couple of years. Then the new refrigerants are coming. The point is that, from uh, as a teacher's point of view, we should be always on the toes. And once we are on the toes, then only I uh, can say um, uh, we are fulfilling our responsibility properly. As far as the refrigerants are concerned, it is uh, almost you can say continuously fast developing uh, area. Still, if you just go uh, the recent article in science, he has talked about the recently developed refrigerants, how they are suitable and how the systems can be improved. So the point is that macroscopic level, thermodynamic, heat transfer and uh, economics, they are important. But at micro level, how the refrigerants play an important part, how the modifications are there, that is also we should be aware of that one. So that is by combination of this one, Obviously, when you when you can say uh, approach towards a new system, in that case the novelty will be there, and almost as a publication point of view, it can easily we can publish it very easily. So that's why we should be very careful. Nowadays, earlier people are talking about, for example, saying I am a refrigerant expert, then somebody says I am a heating expert. This is a little bit nonsense because it is thermodynamic laws we are applied. We should understand that how heating, cooling, and power generation, all these we can just 
incorporate simultaneously and that ability as a faculty we should aware of based upon the calculations then almost can say industrial work or industry requirement uh, based upon the industry requirement we can uh, uh, design the equipment so that's why this is very important and uh, uh, again i am repeating basis of thermodynamic basics of the heat transfer they will remain as it is besides this one industry point of view economics we have to be aware of so that we can incorporate the economics so that the some standard parameters break on point uh, payback period other things we can understand that one so this point of view almost can say this research is still going on and cooling contribution point of view always remember that uh, it is a challenge so a low cost storage system if you just can go for that one design that one so in the, it will create contribution uh, for agriculture and for the country also the reason is that seasonal you can say there are many vegetables and other things are there so seasonally they are very because when the season is there they are available in a very less price and with the season off seasons their price goes suit up uh, very high so this kind of things means we have a uh, storage system is not proper or there may be expensive it is not because industrially viable systems are not there so that's why our economics is uh, because agriculture economics is suffering so from that point of view the cooling and electricity generation it can help us in a big way i'll just give an example for example even in renewable energy sources uh, the biggest uh, plant is a kachu prime minister has inaugurated in which nowadays all what will happen solar panels and your uh, this uh, wind energy both will be simultaneously uh, this is called as hybrid energy hybrid policy based upon the hybrid policy they will start so nowadays since the renewable energy as an individual one source is not sufficient everywhere we have to see that how we, we can multiple sources incorporate in a more efficient way so it is for power generation for electricity uh, for so electricity is already the power generation then cooling and your heating these three requirement of the industry how we can optimize the way we can do it that is the main important thing so we cannot isolate that we are just cooling separately heating separately or power generation separately these three uh, three systems should be integrated not only for industry point of view even for household purpose one have to be very careful so just like uh, can say uh, in an integrated way we have to think that's a very very important one so this is almost can say um, uh, the point which i want to stress that one and uh, almost can say uh, as i have told that uh, can say thinking process should be an integrated way so that the new ideas we can implement very fast and awareness of the software is important particularly engineering equation solver we can very fast Uh, solve the nuclear problems in 90s and early uh, last decade uh, those research problems which were people have solved in months these problems now in hours one can solve that one due to the uh, software flexibility that's a very very important one because the need of the hour that proper softwares we should understand at the same time we should introduce those things to our students in that case in education we can get uh, can do a great help and uh, the students will be uh, can say they are deployable directly for the industry and they can directly tackle the problems uh, that is my short comment thank you thank you very much sir it was very informative session we on behalf of team uh, and all the participants i am very much thankful to you for sparing your valuable time and for uh, such a fruitful session sir thank you very much sir thank you thank you very much Achha sir, N M Bhatia, thank you very much. Welcome sir, welcome. Ah, uh, your economics part is was very interesting. Yes. And uh, definitely, I will browse through your presentation and I will try to learn something from your economics because your economics section was very interesting. So nice, sir. Well, already. From <laughs> <laughs> uh, my side, it's over, sir. Any any other thing? No, no, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Bye. Right, thank you. participants we have very important instructions for all of you please submit your feedback by logging on atal portal it may happen that you may not get certificate if you have not submitted the feedback and second important instruction we have an assignment today at 3:30 uh, there would be 70 objective type of questions and you will get 50 minutes for submission the submission of assignment is compulsory for the certification excuse me and so i hope there is no doubt in feedback regarding uh, and uh, regarding this uh, assignment so we are meeting at 130 for the session please join me for 5 minutes
प्रोफेसर शाह आई थिंक वन से आई होप यू मेड इट वेरी क्लियर से फीडबैक इज टू बी गिवन थ्रू देर लॉग इन देर इज नो लिंक दैट वुड बी सेंड थ्रू द there won't be any link that would be sent through the coordinator they have to log in in their uh, login id and they have to give the feedback yes sir from the portal on which you have make registration for this fdp not on tna but i am talking about the atal portal atal academy portal you have registered you have to go there you have to enter your credentials and then you will see a feedback tab on that feedback tab if you click you will see this training and then you have to submit your feedback no link will be provided by us and link will not be provided by us okay sir thank you thank you sir well